please welcome Professor Sukja Cho. Thank you, Professor Brzezinski. Uh, I'm very honored and pleased to be here at this prestigious Pandusi Colloquium uh, with other great scholars in my field. Uh, thank you, Young Lee, and Young Lee, thank you, Mrs. Lee, and thank you all at George Washington University. My presentation today. The microphone, you're not pointing. You need to stand up. My presentation, is it, is it clear? No? Okay. My presentation uh, today is about a tale of Chunyang in uh, China. So I'd like to begin with a short video clip on uh, performances of tale of Chunyang in three different uh, operatic forms of China, Japan, and Korea. Uh, that was in 2000. The first act was played by the first act was played by Chinese Tuiji uh, Wei Opera consisting of all female performers. The second act was played by Japanese Kabuki, all male performers. <laughs> You see how the gender plays here. She talks about gender performance on the on stage. The final scene was played by Korean opera performance. So that was the first performance in the history of East Station Theatre, performing one particular tale in three different opera forms from China, Japan, and Korea. So when the tale of Chunya was performed in 2000 in Seoul, uh, many Koreans were surprised to learn that their beloved tale of Chunya was also known and played up uh, in Play, uh, performed and you know loved in China and, and Japan, uh, particularly China. And then uh, at the time, I myself translated the Chinese version for the performance. And I was asked many questions about the history of the adaptations right, uh, of the tale in China. Until the early 1990s, when Korea and China established a formal diplomatic relationship, scholarly and cultural discussion and collaboration between China and Korea had been hampered by political and ideological conflict. But after 2000, as the relationship with China became more active, the tale became a Korean cultural icon uh, <coughs> on particular diplomatic stage, and increasing attention has since been paid to the Chinese adaptations of the tale of Chunya. My presentation today discusses several aspects of this story that had not previously been thoroughly explored while providing an overview of the evolution of the tale in China. The history of the tale's adaptation and reception in China is a unique model in the, exchange, in, in the culture exchange between China and Korea in which traditional Chinese stories were always central. By showing the tale's relationship with the pre-modern literary uh, tradition, particularly Chunshan character in China, I suggest that the popularity of the tale in modern China is also better understood in view of the long literary relationship between China and Korea. At the same time, however, I also maintain that more scholarly attention should be paid to the important role of the tale of Chunshang, Chunhyang in China, which will in turn contribute to the understanding of the original Korean tale and of the two cultures that are which shape the different adaptations. The main body of my presentation begins with a discussion of the current research and the of the introduction of the tale in China. The tale of Chunyang is the Korean story uh, most studied in mainland China. Here are some statistics. 
So I have located about 90 scholarly articles from China, excluding those published in Korean journals. Most of them began uh, to emerge in the late 1990s, uh, and uh, actually it can be difficult, difficult to uh, differentiate between uh, articles between uh, between articles written by Chinese authors and those written by Korean uh, Koreans because they also use the same Chinese characters in their name. But the number of the articles, as you see on the table, published in Chinese journals from the 1990s, demonstrates the increased academic interest in the tale in China. So my review of all these scholarly journals presents some problems and issues. Okay, first of all. This Chinese scholarship of the tale of Chunya <laughs> has remained largely within the scope of earlier Korean scholarship, except for the discussion of Chinese opera adaptation. It has tended to rely too heavily on Korean scholarship interpretation and approach. Recently, articles by our Chinese scholars more and more began to apply new approaches, new perspectives, and include new uh, materials. However, Amidst, uh, amidst this growing interest in the tale, the value and the characteristics of the original Korean tale is not deeply appreciated in this research, which fails to aptly intermediate between the Korean tale and the Chinese adaptations. So although the overall number of the article is increasing, a more academic introduction to Korean literature and culture and a more advanced study of the tale are necessary to correspond to this increasing, to a growing interest in the tale in China. As you know, a good translation is necessary uh, to promote the study of the tale in China. Until quite recently, the first known translation of the tale of Chunyang into Chinese was Y1's 1939 edition, Chunxiang Zhuan, which was based on a version written in Japanese uh, by Zhang Hyuk Zhu, his professor of uh, He talked about Zhang Hyuk Zhu <laughs> just before, right? So the first 19, uh, 1939 version was based on his uh, Japanese version. However, since 2013, just a few years ago, when a 1906 adaptation was found in Taiwanese newspaper, we have been uh, we have been able to trace back the Chinese reception of the tale uh, back further. And uh, here you see Kim Min Soon. Uh, Kim Min Soon's Chunxiang, originally published in a magazine called Shou uh, in 2008, was a great success in China. I haven't had a chance to read it, but. Uh, scholars have been praising the adaptation. Uh, so these are the list of the major translations so far. Most of the translations, however, are abridged, abridged and are operatic version based on the operatic versions based on the Korean uh, Changguk version, Korean opera versions. For a more comprehensive discussion of the tale among Chinese scholars, a more appro approachable and full translation of the tale is needed, particularly uh, the original Wanshan editions, eight fully uh, Wanshan editions. Now I would like to uh, present some uh, insight and critical points okay, useful to the research and translation of the tale in China. Now I introduce this Chunshan character in China. Okay, Chunshan, whose name uh, uses the same the same Chinese character, Chunhang. Okay. I'm sure most of most of you are not that familiar with this character Chunshan. Okay, has not been discussed in the scholarship that well. Uh, Chunshan is a well-known supporting character in various literary forms in China, such as Mudang Ting, and also. Uh, some versions of narrative of Liang Shanbu Jing Da in China, and many other Chinese tales, dramas, Baojian, the presentatory text, Baojian literature in China that were performed on local and also commercial stages. Chen Xiang, this Chinese character, Chen Xiang, I will sit here, generally appears as a chivalric woman or maid servant who died and supports a frail, a frail or a vulnerable um, heroine in forming a romantic relationship with a hero. Um, she's portrayed as beautiful, 
clever, active, and aggressive. She's instrumental in plot development and illuminate, illustrates female character ideas through her complementary and flexible role as a go-between. A comparison with the Chinese and Korean characters allows us to examine how the Chinese Chunxiang, who is usually a maid servant, parallels the Korean Chunhyang, a woman of low origin who becomes the wife of a scholar official in Korea. We can assume that the existence and popularity of Chunxiang in traditional Chinese fiction and performance literature may have inspired the composition of the title of Chunyang, either directly or indirectly. However, I want to emphasize that the traditional images of Chunxiang are very important for us to understand the appreciation and appropriation of the tale of Chunyang, Chunyang among Chinese audiences. Uh, when I searched uh, Ai the Chinese database system, I found about 34 uh, literary works that appears, uh, in which the Chunxiang appears as a main character. So that Chunxiang character is not well known to most of the scholarship in Korea. Yeah. The images of a traditional Chunxiang, which were still very much alive in operatic performances in modern and contemporary China, played a role in the Chinese perception and appreciation of the tale of Chunyang. To Chinese audiences, Korean Chunyang's reserved and virtuous gestures added a new savor and explained their understanding of tra traditional images of Chunyang. This intriguing overlap between the Chinese and Korean Chunyang or Chunxiang has yet to be thoroughly explored in the current scholarship. In Korea, the focus on the historical origin of the tale of Chunyang, Professor Yang Gi Kim just explained, uh, Kim Young Nam uh, might be the author of the tale based on the true story uh, in the region. Uh, this historical origin may have obscured the tale's link to Chinese Chunyang. Uh, Chunyang has more frequently been discussed in comparison with other famous romantic heroines, especially the Yingying and the Xixiangji. However, there are other tales which offer more opportunities for comparison with the Xixiangji, such as Li Wa, uh, Li Wa Zhuan and the Wei Jieji. In these tales, the heroines are prostitutes, but faithful to their lovers. I believe more comparative analysis of the Chunyang and with the tales in which the Chunxiang appears, or in which the themes and characteristics are similar to Chunyang, would bring in more, more nuanced, nuanced reading of the tale and illuminate the distinct literary tastes and creativity of Korean authors, Korean audiences. The recent research has shown that The 1906 first known Chinese adaptation. The first known Chinese adaptation of the tale of Chunyang reveals a great deal about how the tale was perceived and appropriated by Chinese audiences more than 100 years ago. This adaptation was published in 1906 in the Taiwanese newspaper, Taiwan The story was composed by writer and news reporter Li Yitao and appeared in five installments from August 17th through August 22nd in the novel section of the fifth page of the newspaper. Written in classical Chinese, it consists of six chapters with two character titles, as is typical in ch traditional Chinese fiction and drama. Each chapter is positioned in the first and <coughs> second column of the page, and it contains between 43 and 51 lines, with each line containing roughly 20 characters. However, no mention is made of Korea, nor is there any explanation of how the author became interested in the tale or what previous versions have, uh, his adaptation was based on. Now I have images here. Okay. Recent research has shown that uh, Lee apparently relied on, uh, again, Japanese version, which was in turn based on a short original Korean version. Uh, I guess should be Kyungpan version, 30 uh, lips Kyungpan version uh, from solid print houses. Since Li's adaptation contains the same characters, place names and Chinese characters used in the Japanese version, this view is possible, plausible. However, in my view, 
the uh, Intel used the Japanese version only as a source text of the original tale and was otherwise not much influenced, influenced by it. I have several reasons. The first, um, this prologue, as you see here, expresses his own idea of the value of the tale of Chunya. He states that love is Love is an indispensable element of life, and praise is a literary work of, uh, that dramatizes uh, the trust and the faithful, faithfulness of lovers, recommending the other literary work like Tao Shan in China. He goes on to write that reading this kind of work is more valuable than reading other romances that emphasize ple emphasizes pleasure rather than obligation. So Li then adds that the tale of Chun Han's praise for faithful love is the reason, the very reason he is offering it to his readers. So this shows that uh, Li's adaptation was ba solely based on his own reading and understanding of the tale of Chun Yang, not just influenced by the Japanese version. A second indication is the level of modification in his adaptation. Though he, the story is set in Korea and its narrative structure follows that of the original Korean tale, Lee Tao makes some remarkable changes in both the characters and the plot. For example, the heroine Chun Hyang dies after being flogged and imprisoned by the local magistrate. However, she suddenly revives as her body was being carried away. He also adds a new character called Li Mengxia, uh, who is Chun Yang's protector. So he helps her uh, twice and disappears suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to have that kind of <laughs> danger <laughs> to protect yourself. The third, these various modifications um, affect the overall mood of the story. Whereas the original Korean tale involves many, many other issues, Professor Chai Gisoo will explain it very well, many other issues, inf information, and all other things, like Confucian virtues, chastity, and sociopolitical criticism. But Lee's adaptation, this Chinese adaptation, just emphasizes the reunion between Li Mengyong, Li Mengyong, and Chun Hyang. They focus solely on the, this romantic theme. So that's the most uh, remarkable differences between the Chinese adaptation and Korean adaptation. So this adaptation provoke, uh, provides hints and raises further questions about the transmission of the tale into China. Considering that the titles of the chapters allude to scenes in the famous Chinese dramatic works, and taking into account the, uh, Li Tao's changes in plot and character, this adaptation demonstrates how our Korean tale is transformed into a Chinese one. Specifically, what has to be changed to make a Korean story not only acceptable, but appealing to a Chinese audience. I believe the first adaptation, the tale of Chun Hyang, may very well have been much earlier than 1906. Before the 1906 adaptation, there are surely two, uh, surely two parallel traditions of Chun Hyang and Chun Hyang in primitive China and Korea. They existed separately, but resembled each other in character, genre, and theme. Though not clearly visible, wrinkling images of the tales and characteristics of Chun Xiang character in China that had accumulated over time in China's audience's mind must have provided the rich soil in which the Korean tale of Chun, Xiang, Chun Yang was reintroduced, transplanted, and grew. Adaptations into operatic forms illustrate the popularity of the tale of Chun Yang in modern China. While the 1906 adaptation we just talked about shows how the tale was fit into the form of a traditional Chinese novel, these operatic forms reveal how the tale, uh, a part of Korean performance literature as well, was transplanted into a different performance, from, uh, performance form in China. There must have been earlier local operatic adaptations, I believe, and I'm sure, but the current solid data allows us to go back no farther than 1950s and 1960s, 
when these operatic forms enjoyed widespread political and intellectual encouragement. Scholars often point out that the political situation of the time encouraged the dissemination and popularity of the tale among Chinese. The relationship between China and North Korea, particularly between Mao Zedong and Kim Il-sung, required a, plat a platform for cultural exchange that would strengthen mutual ap appreciation and recognition, and with it, their political bond. The first operatic adaptation was staged in 1954 by the Shanghai Weiji Opera Troupe, which had learned the tale directly from the North Korean troupe uh, during Korean War, that was 1953. The success of this particular version led to more adaptations in other operatic forms. I have located at least 11 different operatic forms. China was that popular. So I will show the first one in 1954. You will see how they used and represented the costumes and then the, the, the different song and the gestures. and the North Korean and Korean version. The North Korean version was actually uh, based on Korean version, earlier Korean version. So North Korea doesn't mean much in my view. The, the person who made the North Korean adaptation, they were actually, the, you know, they were active in South Korea and they went to the North after 1945. So anyway, so the, the comparison with the North Korean uh, version shows a few uh, changes. Okay. The first, um, the real opera adaptation modifies scenes, characterization, music, and language, while trying to maintain the spirit and aesthetic of the original tale. This is what the director said. I'm not sure what you know to maintain the Korean spirit in this uh, operatic performance, but the director said he wanted to keep the Korean spirit and aesthetic. Second. The all-female cast of the weird drama, weird G, rendered the tale tender, elegant, and delicate. <coughs> you will see it more later. Uh, and the third, the adaptation emphasizes the tale's elements of love and emotion over those of chastity and other social <coughs> political satire, okay, which is very similar in the case of the Lee Li, Li Tao's adaptation in 1906. <laughs> the performative nature inherent in this original tale of Chunhyang and his pansori performance surely uh, made it extremely suitable for integration into uh, this Chinese operatic tradition <coughs> and culture, as is evidenced by the number of subsequent operatic adaptations. So far, uh, versions of the title, uh, tale of Chunhyang have been reported very popular in Korea, and especially the version in Chaoji Opera, Chao, uh, which is the Guangdong area, Minnan, Fujian area, it's particularly popular. And people in that region, they, they, they can sing some part of the Chunhyang, this operatic form, particularly the Saranga, which uh, in, in Chinese, Aiko, Bieko, and you can find lots of, lots of YouTube, YouTube images. So let's watch a couple of more video clips on these adaptations. So I think you will enjoy it. This is short, but I wanted to keep 30 minutes. <laughs> so this is the scene how they met for, for the first time. <laughs>
ancestor. <laughs> so she's actually the performer who played in 1954. You can see she is a little bit aged here. Yeah, she played the first one. She still played in 1980s. She's still alive, I think. Okay, and then the next one. It's the same Shanghai Uyeji Tuan, the same opera troupe, but this is the most recent one, 2014, I, I remember. Now you see the changes of clothes and everything.
the increase in transmission and adaptation of the tale of Chunhyang in modern China offers a rare opportunity to discuss the literary and cultural engagement of the two countries through a Korean model. The brief survey of the tale of Chunyang in this presentation sheds light on the tradition of Chunxiang character in China and in so doing a cause for a broader, more often open approach to understanding the tale of Chunyang. It also offers a brief overview of the vein, uh, the scholarship and trans a translation, as well as the main differences between modern China adaptations and Korean version. As we have seen, many of the complexities and all the details Professor Chen Kisu uh, explained earlier of the original uh, character and the tale were not translated into the Chinese context. By examining why that is, we may advance both the studies on the tale and our knowledge of the two countries, cultures. In other words, a more thorough understanding of the recent and, um, and evolving adoption of the tale of Chunyang in conjunction with older and local traditions will surely enrich uh, the heretofore limited scholarly discussion on these Chinese adaptations. Thank you.